Just waiting for your video to catch up with audio. Okay, here we go. Where should I throw the spear? A, towards where they're headed. B, behind them to predict the dodge. Or C, where their flash would land them. Let's find out. Well, you clearly suck. So why didn't I present that as an option? Well, it was to demonstrate how... First things first, let's start off with some general rules to follow that'll immediately improve your aim as long as you listen to me and follow them, okay? Number one, I call this the Tarantino rule. In FPS games, you're taught to go for headshots because they do more damage, that's fine. But in MOBA games like League, they actually do nothing if not hurt your damage output. Reason being, everyone's hitbox is actually on the ground with their feet. It might be hard to imagine, so I drew a graphic for you to understand, but you don't need to understand this rule. Just aim at their feet and you'll be good. I don't really want to explain further. So this means when you're trying to aim ahead of people, if you're shooting from the east or west, simply account for the fact that you might be aiming for their head and then adjust. Rule number two. Always predict. This one actually requires a little bit of explanation, but I'll make it very simple to start, so here's the one-liner now. Always throw predictions against players who have played this game for more than a year. So before the game starts, just check their OPG for this condition. Don't question it, just do it. Okay, now let's get a little bit nerdy about it. As a caveat, I'm going to explain to you a system of thinking that will make it easier for me to articulate and for you to understand, but the actual topic of metagaming is significantly more complex and time-consuming, so I won't be perfectly accurate and accommodate all situations. To put it simply, I'm trying to put it simply, so don't nitpick me, asshole. YouTube is a game in and of itself. Here are the three primary layers of intent with dodging. These layers repeat themselves over and over based on the player's predictions, but we're going to stick to these three first because human beings, uh, more specifically mobile players, do not play past these three. Layer zero is simple. You're not thinking, so when a skill shot comes at you, you don't dodge. Probably get hit by it too. Layer one is what every player with at least a year of experience, but not required, will default to. They will dodge consciously because it registers in their brain that a skill shot's coming at them. Layer 2 is where it gets difficult to understand because functionally it looks the same as layer 0 where you don't dodge, but this time it's on purpose. Why? Because you're anticipating an anticipation. So let's go over the layers of intent with skill shots to understand this better, and then come back to this. These are the layers of intent for skill shots. Layer 0, you're not consciously thinking about where to fire it, so you default towards where the character would go. This is probably because you're assuming your opponent's path will remain the same. Layer 1. You anticipate a dodge, so you fire it where you think they will dodge, and this doesn't necessarily have to be behind them, just basically anywhere but where they're headed. Layer 2, now bear with me here, you are expecting them to run forward because you think that they think that you will fire a prediction. The beauty in this system is that I don't even need to film a different clip to demonstrate Layer 2. Layer 0 and Layer 2 look exactly the same from the perspective of the one dodging. If you think about it, there's no difference between where you're shooting for layer 0 and layer 2. The only difference is in the intent, the why you're shooting where you're shooting, which is why from your perspective, it is actually a different shot. I know this is confusing in theory, so we'll examine this in a practical setting. But before we need to do so, I need to introduce two extra rules that govern who wins the skill shot slash dodge game. First, Let's establish that because every other layer is functionally the same action, for example 0, 2, 4, 6, as well as 1, 3, 5, 7, we need to find a formula to win for both sides. So, if you are the one dodging, you have to be on the opposite kind of layer. If they're playing an even number, like 0 or 2, you have to be an odd number layer of thinking, like 1, or super deep for a human, 3. Therefore, if you're the one firing the skill shot, you have to be on the same kind of layer. By default, most players dodge at layer 1. This means against most people, you always fire predictions. Now, let's take a look at this theory in practice. I've used this example a ton, but it's good to start here because it's a simple one. Keep in mind the rules I mentioned, if I'm shooting at them, I want to be on the same layer. I anticipate a default dodge, so I'm thinking one layer deep. He's anticipating a default shot, so he's one layer deep. I win. Here, MF's path is going to the left and slightly up. I fire a prediction deep to her right, and she just barely default dodges and tries to correct afterwards, but I hit her anyway. Immediately afterwards, I fire a prediction towards the Lux, but you'll notice she does not dodge. I hit her anyway, but you have to think about whether or not it's layer 0 or layer 2. Do they mean to, or were they lazy? Now, this is where it gets very interesting. You have to make an educated guess as to whether your opponent intended to do that or not. A really, really simple way to tell is to think about what you look like from their point of view. If you're constantly firing predictions and they get used to it, they're clearly playing a layer deeper at level 2. 
And now you have to assume that it is a conscious decision. So the way to beat that now is to play on the same layer and not predict. And that's exactly what I do here. And just to demonstrate, this Lux never dodges for the rest of the game against me. Could be lazy, could be smart. So you don't actually have to learn any of what I just said, I was explaining it like that, just to try to appeal to both sides, the nerds as well as the ones looking for a quick rule. So for the average player, just predict every shot until they catch on and then you mix it up. And for the nerds, probe your opponent with the first couple of skill shots you throw against them to determine what layers they like to play on. Then adjust your strategy accordingly. Every skill shot you throw, you have to think about what kind of profile you're creating for yourself and try to anticipate the opponent adjusting to you ahead of time. This goes for both dodges and skill shots. You'll notice I hit some nasty dodges, but they never once adjust. Why? Because I assume they're noobs, so they won't do what I just said, and I just go with the same default dodge every single time. Alright, rule number three, use the environment. The environment around you and your opponent can be used to read where your opponent will dodge in plenty of cases. There will almost always be an environmental factor or some sort of detail that allows you to narrow down your opponent's options. Don't want to go over every single case, so let's just go over some super general cases. Case number one, walls. People generally can't dodge into a wall. Therefore, the only way they can dodge is off the wall. And this means that if you line up your skill shot to be parallel with the wall or somewhat parallel, you can force your opponent to have to dodge off of it. And then we can also apply rule number two, GG. For example here, this dude recognizes he needs to get off the wall, but he gets too antsy and dodges again into the wall so I can overlap his entire hitbox with my Q and he has no outs. Case number two, zoning. In a lot of cases, you don't actually have to land a skill shot to gain value. If you fire a skill shot in a way where either they get hit by it or take another bad option, you can get value regardless of what happens. For example, E is trying to run away from a gank and can either dodge or not dodge. Similarly, Lily is trying to gank and can either fire a normal spear or a prediction spear. This creates a 2x2 matrix. Let's go through each case. First, we have normal spear versus dodge. Nidalee clearly misses, but she zones E into an auto attack at the very least. Next, we have normal spear versus no dodge. Nidalee gets a nice hit in. And then we have Predict Spear versus Dodge. Nidalee gets a nice hit in and a slightly better position. Finally, we have Predict Spear versus No Dodge. Nidalee gets nothing. Look like an idiot. So obviously there are a ton of factors that can change up the 2x2 two two matrix, like them having a dash, or maybe they have a teammate nearby and they're baiting, or they don't have to care about getting zoned. The general principle still stands. Sometimes the highest expected value play is to not throw a prediction and go for a zoning one instead, aiming straight at them to force out an option. So you need to learn when to predict and when to zone on a case-by-case -case basis. There's no formula, there's only experience. Sorry buddy. Case number three, vision play. Bushes and corners are the most common juke points because object permanence is one of the first skills you learn as a child. Someone disappears into a bush, you assume they'll keep the same trajectory. They juke once they cut vision. Not everyone does this, but if they do it a single time, that is a key point of information about your opponent's profile. It means they're aware and now you must play the guessing game. When they turn that corner, are they dodging? Or are they keeping path? Here are some common jukes that you'll see. I'm sure you can derive a general principle from this. The easiest way to counter this is to have vision in the spot, so warding around the corner or the bush is always an option if you have one. But again, by default, always predict. All right, the final rule, number four, metagame. Now, a lot of these topics are closely related and I'll be repeating some points, but I think it's worthwhile to do separate categories so it's easier to focus on one particular thing at a time. All right, with that being said, some people are good at this game and others are emerald. The average human reaction time is about 250 to 300 milliseconds. For gamers, I'd imagine it's more like 200 milliseconds, but that's probably because like they tend to be on the younger side. But I'll do a more in-depth video on reaction times in the future. To put it simply here, pay particular attention to just how fast someone reacts, if at all, to your skill shots. More often than not, there will be some player on the enemy team that is just an easier shot than the rest. We tend to call them support players. Jokes aside, if you constantly play the metagame of watching the person and not necessarily the character they're playing, you can identify who has shit reactions and maybe even just like bad ping that you can take advantage of. Now I'm not going to feed you bullshit like people tend to dodge left and down instead of up and to the right because it's easier to move your mouse towards yourself than to move it away given their posture. I'm not going to say shit like that. It's more like small things, you know, pay attention. Like ADC players like to do zigzags. Mage players might not be looking at the screen when they're casting long range abilities. Some people like to stop dodge and they do that pattern a lot. Some people dodge really long with their clicks like a noob and they just move way too inefficiently. Other people click a lot tighter to the character and maybe they're using WSD for camera or something. Some people are robots. Some people are absolute fucking trolls. You never know. Basically, just pay attention. So, I can't guarantee that you'll become challenger overnight following these rules, but the whole point is to become a lot more aware of not only your opponent's habits, but also your own. 
Additionally, you'll probably spend less time bitching at your teammates if you focus on the actual game. Plus, it's actually really fun getting back-to-back -back reads on people. Up your game, guys. If everyone followed these rules, then we as MOBA players can finally have the mix-up conversation, but we're probably still decades behind the fighting game players. Not me, though. I'm always predicting, and so should you. Hi, you've reached the end of the video. Go ahead and click subs subscribe for the next video. I'll probably put like the next one here or like the previous one. Very nice. What's funny is, if everyone predicts, if everyone always predicts and listens to this video, then the actual proper thing to do is to run straight from now on instead of default dodge. But then if everyone gets on that layer and everyone decides to run straight, then the proper thing to do would be to never predict and always shoot straight. It, it, keeps, going. it keeps going. Just pay attention, okay? Thanks for watching.